welcome to Scribble 8, your source for art and inspiration. Hey, welcome back. We're joined today by guest artist, friend, and amazing collaborator, Souther Salzar. I hope you enjoy. I definitely made sculptures when I was a kid out of found things. My parents did um, a lot of different uh, jobs, like uh, they did some janitorial and they did, uh, they were into fixing up, buying and fixing up and selling houses, a lot of different things like that. And they would take me when I was a kid and I would go through a lot of the stuff that I would find. So sometimes we, they'd get a house and there would be a lot of junk left in the house by the previous tenants and I would go through and try to make things out of it, like shoebox guitars and when they did janitorial, it was in addition to their other jobs. So they would do it at night, and sometimes they would pick uh, pick us up from school, and we would go after school and do them. One of the places they did was like an electronics. Uh, I'm not really sure what it was, like an electronics engineering type place. We would find uh, all the gear there and a little electronic pieces and wires, uh, you know, transistors and things. And my brother and I would collect them and play with them and make stuff out of them. Part of it, I think part of it is um, just sort of a weird urge to reuse things and recycle things. And, and um, when I find little, when I use up a bottle or I use up a container, um, it's hard for me to throw it away. So this gives me an outlet. A lot of this stuff is still in progress or maybe is always in progress as i've accumulated more of this more bits and pieces i feel like i um it's going to be one of those long-term projects where i keep adding to the world and see how deep it grows because my my dad has an antique store and one time i took a break from school in order to pay my rent and my bills and everything, I, I try to be a picker like him and go around to all the garage sales and estate sales and thrift stores and find stuff to sell on eBay. During school I did that and I accumulated in that process so much other stuff um, that I would find at estate sales and things. And a lot of it's stuff I still use. I still go, I go a lot with Monica on the weekends, we'll go to the flea markets. So I think some of the sculpture stuff is actually uh, sort of another place to collect some of the odds and ends that we find on the way. The, one of the problems I've had is it actually takes me, takes me a lot longer to, to make sculptures than to make paintings. And, and in a way, it's for me to enjoy the process, it needs to not have the feeling of a deadline. What I, what I really hate is if I get into a place where I start to think about my time in terms of any kind of having a value, you know, where I think, well, I can, I can spend all day playing around, like cutting up pencils and gluing them together, or I could make a painting, and, and if I make the painting, I could sell that painting. Like, for me, that's, that's frustrating if, if I think of things in that way. So I like the sculptures to be kind of more of like an open-ended project. They're just sort of pieces I keep working on and adding to. I think a lot of your work is just kind of fable-esque, you know, dreamlike, where it's kind of touches something familiar and then pushes you into a place unknown. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Maybe it's a cliche, but art is kind of a form of therapy and you take, you can take negative experiences and um, filter them in a way where you come out the other end and with something positive to say. And for me, I think it's, it's kind of always brings me back to a better place when I'm working and I'm, and I'm, you know, I don't think everything I create is, has the, is always as happy, the same positive qualities, but I think just for me as a process, it makes me a happier person, and hopefully less crazy. So for now, thank you very much and thanks for listening.